Welcome back, Django family, to the Inch by Inch series. This course will teach you clearly and simply how to create a Django application. From project setup to application creation with a simple view, URL configuration, and a template. There are a lot of moving pieces to a Django project, but we will take it step by step, inch by inch, and bring understanding to these concepts once and for all. Let's get started. In this class, we are using PyCharm, the IDE PyCharm, to create our project and all our other objects. You can use another IDE if you're comfortable, or you can use no IDE if you're nuts. But the absolute easiest way that I have found is PyCharm. I also have another course up there that shows you how to create the Django project using VS Code. That's another alternative, and there are other IDEs, but this is my absolute favorite for the Django framework. So here we go. In PyCharm, we will go to File, New Project, and then we select Django in the context menu that comes up, okay? And here in Location, we'll create a name for our project. Mine's called Important Dates. Then you see here, I create a new virtual environment. It's a really good idea to use a virtual environment when you're creating a framework like Django because you'll be installing many different packages and this will instantly keep track of all of that. And when you want to create your next project, you'll have it all together. It creates a layer of abstraction away from your base OS and it's, it's a wonderful way to work. Now, location gets self-populated for me based on the name of the project I just gave it. So you see important dates are there as well. My base interpreter in my case is 3.7. You can choose a different one if you like. Important dates is the parent folder under which our virtual environment will live. And I give you a little snippet of my PyCharm application. I have important dates, and then underneath there you see VENV. That is the folder that houses our virtual environment. So now on this slide, we will create our new project from within our virtual environment. Now see right here, VENV in parentheses at the beginning of my command line tells me indicates to me that I am now in my virtual environment. Another great thing about PyCharm is the virtual environment will spin up automatically for you. You don't have to do anything like activate it. However, for those of you who may not be using PyCharm, I'm going to show you in a minute on the very next slide how to activate and deactivate your virtual environment at will. So let's create the project here. This is the command we use, Django hyphen admin space, start project, space, and then you give it a name. I'm giving mine the name of dates. Now, when I execute this code, you'll see we now have a new structure within our PyCharm environment. We see dates as the project folder underneath our important dates container that we had created. Now, you'll see something else that sometimes confuses people, but I'm going to make this completely unambiguous with a chart that I have coming up real soon. Underneath the project folder dates, you'll see a second folder called dates. Could be a little confusing. It was for me when I first started to play around with Django. But that is the subfolder to your project folder. And you'll always be able to tell because that's where you'll have things like your init.py, your settings.py for your project. Okay? And dates, the project folder, you'll always be able to tell that from the subfolder because that is the folder that creates manage.py. We're going to get into what manage.py does and why it's important. But over time, right now this could be a very confusing topic, but over time this will become so second nature to you. So don't worry about it. Just take it in. And I strongly recommend when you're done viewing this presentation, view it again and view it a third time before you go into any other class because this is going to really help to have these concepts sink in. Okay, and I promised I would show you how to explicitly activate and deactivate your virtual environment. So you see this top line here. I'm in a regular old command prompt. Now, look down here for a minute. I have my VENV, my virtual environment, underneath my important dates, my parent folder. In there, you'll see a folder called bin, and inside of that, you'll see a file called activate. It's against that that we must run this command. So, 
back to the top line, source, then space, and then however we get to our path, venv slash bin activate in my particular case. So it depends at what level of your directory structure you're at, but it'll give you an error. Django will give you an error if, you, if you're not giving it the right path to get to your activate file. But very simply source space and in my case venv slash bin activate. If you were cd'd into your venv directory, you can just do a bin slash activate. It depends where you are in your directory structure. Now to deactivate, very simply, just deactivate and nothing else works fine for me. I created this chart because I wish that I could have found something like this when I was first learning Django. I found it so utterly confusing coming from Python and not having all this infrastructure. So consider this gold and consider this my gift to you and may it make this easy for you to understand. This is my Django project conceptual drawing. Not all of this will make sense right now, but it will be gold as you continue to use Django. So refer to this often. So everything in green is a directory. Everything in this light bluish, light purplish type of color, depending upon how you see it, is a file. So on at the very top level, we have our Django container folder. Then the next layer down is our project. Okay, that's our project directory. And in this slide, it's called my underscore project. The file that lives in my underscore project is manage.py and that enables the running of administrative commands like starting your server. We're going to learn much more about that. To the side of my underscore project, also in the Django container folder, is your virtual environment folder. Remember we saw that, V-E-N-V. -E Inside your virtual environment folder is a directory called bin, right? And inside there is the activate file. And that's the file we ran the command line command against to activate or deactivate our virtual environment. Okay, so that's all in the VENV virtual environment folder. Okay, so now inside project, inside my project top directory, right, my project directory is the subdirectory also with the same name, my underscore project. Inside my underscore project lives the following four files my init.py file. This lets Python know that this is a package. The settings.py file. This holds all our project settings and configurations. Very important. We'll be in and out of there a lot. The urls.py file for our project. This is like an index for all the urls.py files in all the other applications that we create. We'll get to exactly what that means. And the wizg.py is for setup and configuration of our production web server. Okay, so that's in the subfolder that has the same name as my underscore project. Okay, a sister folder to that, and you could have many of these, would be your application folder. Okay, and this particular application is called my underscore app, and I'm calling it application number one. So this is the directory for our application, and in here certainly has many files and, a, and an important folder. So we have the migrations folder. This is used to manage our DB and our DB versioning. Then we have an init here. Again, anytime we have an init in Django, it just says, hey, Python, this is a package. It should be treated as a package and it has special significance. Then we have an admin.py file used to register our models. Models are analogous to a database table or database schema. Then we have apps.py. This has to do with configuring our given application. In this case, it would be my underscore app. Models.py for application one is where we would define our application tables. Then we have test.py. This would be used for unit testing. We have a urls.py for this application specifically. And this would be used, used to store our, the patterns for our URLs. So when somebody comes to our website, they're going to access a certain URL that's stored there. And that links to a given view, which is the little engine behind that, which says, OK, once they access that link, what should they do? The view is the logic behind the what should they do. So we have a views.py for each application. 
okay? So hopefully this is starting to make sense. We're gonna go into every single part and piece of this through this whole inch by inch series, but I wanted to give it to you on one slide so that you can start to make sense of all that is a Django project. Okay, so we have a project, but we haven't created an application yet. Now don't quit on me. Let's get into this. What is the difference in Django land between a project and an application? An application is a web application that does something. It's a blog, it's a database of public records, it's a simple presentation app, etc. A project is a collection of configurations and applications for a particular website. A project can contain multiple applications, and each one I've built has. An application can be in multiple projects. So we want to CD into that dates folder. So you'll be where manage PY lives. So from my virtual environment, if I do an LS, I'm going to see dates and manage.py. Okay, so now I can issue the following command against manage py. That's why I cd in here. Python 3, if you're on Mac, Python if you're on Windows, Python 3, manage.py, start app, and then give it a name. Even though we're saying start app, we're creating the app. Mine's called date underscore track. And when I execute this command, you'll see a change to my structure in PyCharm. Now underneath dates, you'll see the new application called date underscore track. Okay, so mission accomplished. Okay, two things on this slide. As a result of doing the startup command and creating your application, within that new date underscore track folder, you will see in the apps.py file this class date track config that inherits from the app config class gets created and the name will equal the name of our application, which is date underscore track. That should happen automatically. If for some reason it doesn't, you want to make sure that it's set up in just this way. The other thing that we'll have to do manually is in the settings.py file. That's gonna be under the inside dates. You go back to the diagram to my conceptual drawing. Inside the inside dates folder, so your projects folder, you'll, you'll remember the settings.py file where all our settings happen and where all our configurations happen. There's a section in there for application definition. It's called installed underscore apps, all in caps, and a big honking list of strings separated by commas. We'll have to add to the bottom of that date underscore track, which is the name of the application we just created, dot apps and the name of the class date dot date track config and a comma at the end okay in quotes and a comma at the end in this presentation i'm trying not to get too much in the weeds in other presentations we're going to get very much in the weeds but i have to mention two settings within the settings.py file that confused me for so long i can't even begin to tell you but i think i have it down to a science in how to explain this. Hopefully it works for you. If not, you'll let me know. As we said, the Django settings file contains all the configuration settings for your Django installation. There are two settings that I'm gonna call out here. Base underscore dir, all caps, is the path to where manage.py lives. In the settings.py file, the path to the directory where manage.py lives gets automatically generated by the Django admin start project command that we ran. And that path will look just like this, base underscore dir equals os.path.dir name. And I have a great presentation on the os and the os.path modules. So check that out for even more emphasis on what this is. So os.path.dir name, then inside that os.path.dir name, then inside that os.path.absolute path name, and then a dunder for file. What is that? Hold that question for just one minute. Then we have the project root. Project underscore root is the folder that contains settings.py. Okay, so base dir, manage.py, project root, settings.py. And the path to project root is os.path.dir name, os.path.absPath, absolute path, and again with a dunder file. So let's look at os.path.absPath. 
So that's the absolute path for file. What's file in this case? Settings.py. The os.path, that apps path, is the absolute path to the file with the leading slash. So that is users, in my case, then my user, PyCharm projects, important dates, dates, dates again, and then settings.py. So we put an os.path.dir name in front of os.path.absPath. This is the directory that our settings.py file lives in, right? This points, right? If, if absPath.file is settings.py, then os.path.directory is the directory that that sits in. If we add a second one of those in front of that, like we have for our base dir, that is the directory that houses the directory where settings.py lives. So that's two levels up. So that happens to be where manage.py lives. So that's the thing that's tricky here. It looks counterintuitive, but it's actually pointing to a directory that houses the file and then a directory, in the case of base dir, a directory that houses the directory that houses the file. So it all happens relative to what this file is, underbar, underbar, file, underbar, underbar. In Python, that's called a dunder, right? When we have two underbars at both sides of a name. And that file, in this case, happens to be settings.py. So if you get confused, think about it relative to the settings.py file and where that lives in our directory structure. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, ask me questions, I'll try it again. What is a view in Django? A view function, or view for short, serves a specific purpose and is the actual logic behind what a specific Django template presents to the end user. This could be a home page or an index page or displays information that's stored in a database or produces a dashboard or what have you. Web pages and other content in Django are delivered by views. They are the logic behind what you see. Each view is represented by either a Python function or if it's a class-based view, which we also have in Django, it's a method. A view is chosen by a certain URL pattern within the URL configuration, and it's based on what a user requests through a given web browser, specifically through the part of the URL that appears after the domain name of the website. So here we have www.akc.org slash dog breeds. It's the dog breeds part that corresponds to a given view. A view at a minimum must do one of two things. It either returns an HTTP response object containing the content of the request, or it will raise an exception. Let's look at one of these view functions. Each view takes an HTTP request object as its first parameter. Whether it uses it or not, it has to be there. And by convention, that parameter is called request. So here we have our code. From Django.HTTP, we import HTTP response. And we do that so we can use that in our return statement in this function. So this view is defined as hello underscore world. That's its name. The first parameter is request. The request object represents a single request by a user agent, and that can be a web browser or a search agent or something like this. And then we simply return a string through the HTTP response method, hello world. That's the only thing this view does. We just looked at the generic syntax of a view. Now let's look at one that maybe we create, a very simple one, for our date tracker application. In our date tracker slash views.pwall file, we create a home view. And I'm always going to qualify it throughout all these trainings with the directory that it's in because if we have multiple applications or even multiple view files, I want you to know exactly where that sits within the structure of our application. So we have from Django.http, again we import HTTP response. We have a home function view. It's single parameter by convention, of course, will always be request. Then we defined a variable which equals a string. I am the date tracker application. And through the HTTP response method, we will return that. The string in the date tracker variable is what we return in our HTTP response method in our view named home. Provided we have a corresponding URL pattern set up, and we're going to get to that for this view, this string is what will be displayed. And the only thing 
right now that will be displayed on our web page. What are URLs and how do they correspond to Django? Well, a URL in general is a uniform resource locator. It's a human readable address for resources on the web, such as web pages. To design URLs for web applications created within the Django framework, you create a Python module informally called a URL conf or a URL configuration. This forms a mapping between two things. Number one, the URL path expression to the Python function, which is your views. So it makes a connection between the URL configuration and the views. So the URL configuration is in the URLs.py file. Of course, your views we covered is in the view.py file. So there's a very important relationship here. So what does a URL configuration actually do? The URL conf acts as a sort of table of contents for your Django application. It lets your application know what views are available and what precise URLs map to those specific views. To put it simply, it both defines and calls a view function to a specific URL. It works like this. The URL comp says, when a user accesses the following URL, and it's a fake site here, example website.com slash baseball, call the baseball.py view. Awaken that view and let its logic flow through so that the viewer can actually see something. That's what the configuration does. So now we'll go ahead and create our URL patterns to support our home view. In our date underscore tracker dot URLs that pie. And again, when you see that, you know that it lives in the date underscore tracker package or folder. We create a URL pattern for our home view. So we have some imports from Django dot URLs import path. We need that because we're going to use the path method from dot import views. We must import our views file. Since it's in the same folder as our urls.py, we can simply use the dot notation. So from dot import views, meaning right here, right at this level. So now we have URL patterns equals, and then we have path, an empty string. The empty string will go to the root of our project URL for our development server, and that will be the 127.0.0.1 with the a port of 8000 by convention. And then we have views.home. Views.home points to our view for this pattern. This is what makes the connection. So when a user goes to the 127001 port 8000, they will be served up the functionality provided by our home view, which is a function called home. And then we name it. We name it name equals home. You'll see that later, how that becomes important, how that makes things easier for us through our development. When we looked at our Django project conceptual drawing, we saw, you may remember, that there were several URLs.py, or I should say there could be several. There were two for our project. There was one in the My Project Inside Project directory, and there was one in our application directory. So this one that we're going to talk about now is the one in our project, our project, so our, our inside project application directory. We just talked about the one for the application specifically. This is the one at the project level. So now in dates slash urls.py, right, our project urls.py, we create a URL pattern which includes the URL patterns from our applications urls.py. You see how we make a handshake? In other words, the applications urls.py is located at date underscore tracker slash urls.py. Okay, so two different files in two different directories. You can think of this as an index of all the urls.py files we may have in our project. If we have several applications, we would have a urls.py for each one of those, and each one would need to have an entry in our projects urls.py. So it doesn't look very different here at the top in our imports from django.contrib import admin. That's different because that's for our admin pattern that you see. We won't talk about that here. But from django.urls import path, we had that before in the one for our application, and then comma include. We need include because we're going to use the include method on this one. So urls pattern equals, then we have our path empty string and then include date underscore track that URL. So it's pointing to that other URLs. Note the construction of this URL pattern looks a bit different because of the include statement. But this is how we include 
the URL from our application. Okay, now with that all done, we can fire up our application again. We start the server if it's not already running. For me, it's python3 manage.py run server. For you, it might be just python without the three. Then we'll see the URL come up, the HTTP 127.0.0.1, port 8000. When we click on that, ta-da, we see our application at that URL, at that address, and all it says is, I am the date tracker application. And where does that come from? That comes from our home view, courtesy of the HTTP response method. In the beginning of this inch by inch series, I have the Django Web Framework Overview and I talk about the MVC or the MVT method. And Django, the T stands for templates. So that's what we're going to talk about now. What is a template? Being a web framework, Django needs a convenient way to generate HTML dynamically. The most common approach relies on what's known as templates. A template contains the static parts of the desired HTML output, as well as some special syntax describing how dynamic content will be inserted. It essentially is an HTML file. Django defines a standard API for loading and rendering templates regardless of the back end. So platform independent. Loading consists of finding the template for a given identifier and pre-processing it, usually compiling it to an in-memory representation. Rendering means interpolating the template with the context data and returning the resulting string. The DTL, or the Django template language, is Django's native template system. You can also use something known as Jinja2. I've used that with Flask deployments, or no templating system at all if you choose. Template engines are configured through the template setting, again, in the magic settings.py file. Now you know why we emphasize that in the beginning of the presentation. If the app underscore dir setting is set to true, the engine will look for templates inside installed applications within your project. Okay, and here is PyCharm, and here is our views, right? Here is our settings.py, and if we scroll down to the template section, which is right here, we see app underscore dirs is set to true. That's what we're talking about. Okay, so we'll create our first template with that. The first thing to do is in our applications directory called date underscore track or whatever yours is called, create a folder called templates. Second thing is from within that folder, you create your HTML file. We're going to call it home.html. So within templates, you will create home.html and then you'll create the syntax to look just like this. And if you're using PyCharm, when you do a right-click HTML, it's going to create much of this infrastructure for you, much of the, the casing, the HTML tags. So what do we have? Entitle, date tracker, app, name of our app, whatever your app is. And then I have an H1 tags, welcome to the date tracker application. And an H2, never forget an important date again, our slogan in italicized. Um, and then in strong tags, I have hello there. And then I have these funny things in these double curly brackets, login and the strong and it's, and then I have the variable date. What could that mean? We're going to see that on the very next slide. And here we'll just modify our home view just a bit. So we have from Django.shortcuts import render. So that's something new that we haven't seen before. And then from date time, import date time. This is just a Python file, right guys? We can import any of the Python modules that we care to use for our views, depending upon the application. So def home request always will be the first parameter. Current user, I'm setting hard coding the current user to be Mabel Marbles. Say that 10 times fast. And then we have a return render. Instead of the HTTP response, we're using the shortcut render. Send back the request. Home.html is our template that we just created. See the link? We're referencing it there. Then we have this dictionary looking object here, which is actually the context. The key date for the value date time dot now, the key login for the value current underscore user. And date and login, these variables are going to be used in our template to bring back the values that they represent, which of course is date time dot now and current user respectively. And that will get rendered when somebody goes to that URL. So you see how all these things work together. The URL's configuration, the view, 
and of course the template. Okay, and now we can see our latest changes. Again, we, we start the server, Python manage.py run server. We access our link and we see our website with our new and improved changes. Okay, so down here we access our link and it brings up, ta-da, our new website. Yay! Looks much better, doesn't it? Returning the date from the date time module, the Python date time module. Maple marbles, that's from our hard-coded variable inside our view. And this, all this stuff comes from the template itself, right? All this static stuff here, but these two are our variables that get pulled in from our view. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so in this module, we went from scratch, from the very beginning to the very end of creating our first Django application in 30 minutes or less. Thank you for watching till the end. If this class has helped you, consider helping me to continue to bring these classes to you and others. Helping is easy. Just do the following. First, subscribe to this Yogi Coder YouTube channel. Next, like this video and leave whatever comments or questions you may have. And finally, share this video on any and all social media platforms with your friends and colleagues. And as always, this presentation and any associated code will be stored up on GitHub at the link that you can find below the video. Thanks again, friends. We have so much more to dig into to really get a strong understanding of all the ins and outs of the Django framework. It's a wonderful framework. I'll see you in the next one.